Joining me on the latest episode of 6 a.m. Morning Practice, we have a former Nebraska volleyball assistant coach. That is Remy Para. Remy, thank you for coming on today, and I'll let you tell the audience a little bit about yourself. First, thank you very much for having me. Really appreciate it. Uh, so I'm Remy. I was one of the graduate assistants for the Nebraska volleyball. Uh, I come from France. I moved in the U.S. Uh, five years ago, spent four years uh, in Long Beach, uh, with Long Beach City College and Long Beach State, and then moved to Nebraska a year and a half ago. And so that was my second season with the Huskers. And how did you wind up first from France to California? And then how did you wind up at Nebraska from California? So I have to go back a little, a long time ago. Uh, for people that are familiar with uh, Nicole Davis, she's a former two-time silver Olympian and uh, she was a libero for USC. She won two national championships over there. She was one of the best libero in the world and she was playing in a professional team that was in my hometown and I happened to be one of the assistant coaches for that professional team. And uh, I showed her around during the season. Uh, she was in my hometown, so I helped her having a good time. And so to thank me, she was like, hey, would you like to come to California uh, during that summer? And I was like, sure. And then she told me like, would you like to go with national team? Uh, because she was still training with Karsh Karai and national team. And I was like, even more sure. So I spent uh, two weeks, uh, two, three weeks with the national team met all the players and that's where I met uh, Kristen Hildebrand. Uh, and so I met Tyler through Kristen. And so after I graduated from uh, Cal State Long Beach, uh, Tyler, I contacted Tyler and he was interested in having me as a GA. So that's how I got the connection with Nebraska. And then my interviews went well. And so here I was. And um, what was one of your first reactions to not only going to the Nebraska volleyball program, but moving to Nebraska? I, as a foreigner, I didn't know how big a volleyball program Nebraska was. I knew they were like one of the best, but I was not expecting anything like this uh, in terms of like resources. I was really shocked when I first, when I visited uh, the national team, I was really surprised by the size of the gym, like how many people were training, how many people were coaching. It's very, very different from what we have in uh, Europe. And so Nebraska is just like another breed. Um, what was, um, you said uh, Nebraska- That was like even more resources, like, go ahead. Oh, no, sorry. I, your audio kind of cut out and was lagging. So keep going with what you were saying. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, Nebraska was like really more- than everything that I experienced. So like no professional team in Europe, even the best one have the resources that Nebraska has. Uh, the athletes here have an answer for everything and someone to help them for everything. And that was like really impressive. What the school has put in place for the athletes is like really, really impressive. And um, if you could talk maybe, um about the players because you you said you came two years or you were at nebraska for a year and a half or two years wasn't it mm -hmm. yeah two seasons. so um speak on maybe your first season coming in and what was that first season like with the huskers because obviously at that point the huskers were a very very good volleyball team i think i still think we were a very good volleyball oh, team it was just like ab a, ab absolutely it was a tougher end of the season that's for sure but um it was like I didn't have much time to think. So I moved here in July. Uh, I dropped my stuff and then I drove back to Kansas City because I was still coaching boys volleyball and we had like nationals in Kansas City. So I coached uh, there, the national champion and then drove back in the day after it was the beginning of camp. And then from now on, like from that July till the end of the season, it was like a nonstop thing. So I think I was not ready for like that intensity that fast, uh, everything, like the team was like one really good, working really hard. And I think I was very surprised by like how much it was. Like every day for three hours or more, like the practices were like really intense. Um, what the assistant coaches and GAs will have to do at practice was very, very intense as well. Uh, the level of the girls was surprising. Like everyone was like my height and I'm 6'3". <laughs> <laughs> it was like oh taller it was like i've been around like professional players but like having college kids like this that are like training at that level and 
that are like that physical was something new. Yeah, something like that I had just to adjust. And um, what was one of your roles in practice? Or so, what, what... go ahead, sorry. No, I, I don't have any, I, I'm good. Uh, so GAs are like facilitators of drills. So every time a ball needs to be entered in a drill, uh, we are trying to take as many jumps away from the girls as possible. So instead of having them hitting at each other when they work on blocking, it's us jumping and hitting at them and putting the ball exactly where it's supposed to be. Uh, when they play defense, instead of having someone on the ground, you have like GAs jumping and hitting um, at the girls. Uh, when they are passing, we are also in, in serving. So like we're entering like a ton of balls for them. So they are not having to take all those jumps and they can only work on their craft instead of trying to get each other better, if that makes sense. Um, and so when we play something, then they can tee it off and go at it. Um, so yeah, I think the big, big part of being a GA is like taking between like four and 600 jumps a day and making sure the girls are getting better. Did you say four to 600? Yeah, I would say that's a good, like on the normal practice day, I would say that's a good average. So you obviously weren't expecting to go into a practice and be working. I, I don't want to say, were you working as hard as the players at, at points when you were at some of those practices? I think it's a different type of work because they have to get better. Mm -hmm. Every GA, like one of them, for example, that we have right now is uh, all American as a player. So like we don't try to get better as players, we try to get better yeah. as GAs, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I try to be more precise when we hit the ball and stuff like that. So in terms of like physical charge, it is very intense. We also like bigger, we are men and it's a girl's net. So it's a little bit easier mm -hmm. for us than it is for them. Uh, one of our GAs is like 6'6", six, six, and the other one has probably like a 40 inches vert. So it's like, for them, it's not as like uh, hard to get up there and hit the ball than it could be for like a, a girl mm -hmm. that is, uh, whatever, six foot tall. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yes, we were finishing practice pretty tired. Uh, <laughs> we had access to recovery as well, which was awesome. Even the program was like doing a great job at trying to protect us because they know how intense that is for us and um so to backtrack a little bit you you did play um professional men's volleyball correct was it professional it was so in europe uh, when you go to every sport doesn't matter if you talk about volleyball or not you have the professional team and you have the reserve team which is like the youth uh that are like supposed to feed that professional mm -hmm. team and usually they play in like a lower division uh so i was part of that team so like that means like sometimes you go to practice with the pro uh so like you get around the professional team but i never played professionally like i never had like a professional contract and like played on the professional team the club i was in was like one of the best in the country like they won the national championship for professional like uh two years ago uh so no, i never really either aim to be a professional but i was like around a lot of them let's put it that way so then how did the transition come from playing volleyball at a very high level to then wanting to become a coach and not only a coach but a coach in the in the u.s uh, i've always been attracted to coaching for some reason at first i'm a tennis player uh i played tennis for way longer i'm actually a way better tennis player than a volleyball player and usually people have a hard time believing me when i say that <laughs> uh, and so i became a tennis coach before i became a volleyball coach and i really enjoyed it and i ended up liking volleyball more than tennis stopping tennis to become a, just like a volleyball player. And naturally I started coaching and I really enjoyed it. And as I told you, I was in the best club in the country. So the people that coached me and that I started working with and coaching with were some of the best in the country. So I got like to learn from very, very, very good coaches at like 18, something like this. Uh, I think at 18, we were in the final of a national championship with our team. And then that guy took me under his, my, his wing, sorry, and brought, like, I had, like, a lot of very good experience very early. Um, and I thought that was it. Like, this is what I want to do. And then I discovered the U.S. and, like, the resources and, like, wow, I can do what I love, for, like, in a way better environment. Um, so, yeah, the U.S., like, became, like, a, 
kind of like an obvious that it was my next step, uh, even if it meant like a lot of sacrifices. Um, but yeah, like if I wanted to go to the next step and really enjoy what I'm doing every day, I was convinced like the US was the best place to do it. And could you speak, you said you had to, you know, you, you understood there were some sacrifices you were going to need to make. So could you speak on what some of those were? Uh, I knew one person in the US when I moved, which was Nicole. Uh, so there was like no family anymore. All my best friends are still in France. Uh, so obviously I made friends along the way, uh, but that meant like all the emotional supports that you ever have uh, is gone. Uh, my English was far from being as good as it is right now. So I had to like learn a new language. Uh, the biggest problem was that my French bachelor was not recognized in the US. So it was illegal for me to coach NCA, like the minimum requirement mm -hmm. is a bachelor. So that meant that at 25, I had to restart the whole undergraduate process. So it meant that I had to go back to school, pay for school when I never had to, because in France it's free. Uh, so yeah, it was like going back to school for five years. I just graduated with my master's program from UNL uh, five years and a half later. And so now I finally have the right to coach in NCA. So I knew I was in for a treat. Like that would be a long, a long way uh, to where I want to be. And um, I, I did read the article that was made for you on um, volleyballmag.com. And you talked about, you know, you said you had to finish your undergrad grad program, but you had to do it in a lot shorter time to be able to coach than what most people did. Is that correct? It was uh, a bit tricky because so when I moved in the US, uh, it still took me four years to get my undergraduate. But because I was 25, like the last time I went in school was like a long time ago and my English level was not awesome. Uh, you know, right, you have like those placement tests when you're mm -hmm. a foreigner, when you come here. So I actually know where your level of reading, math mm -hmm. and uh, literacy is. And of course I didn't do awesome on those <laughs> because like I haven't got a math class in like seven years or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they placed me like really low and having to take all those like five credit classes uh, that take a lot of time and I had to take to go back at the level. So basically I think for my four years of undergrad, I was taking like about 18 credits a semester. Plus I was taking classes during the summer and during the winter to catch up. Uh, so basically I had to go like all out nonstop to get my bachelor on time, despite like being ranked as low. And I graduated with like a 3.9 GPA or something like that. So it was just like, get back in the rhythm and that was enough. So um, with all of that, you, you did school all the entire time in the US. You're from a completely different country, but you're in mm -hmm. another country working. What was the motivation and the drive? Because I'm sure it wasn't all fun the entire time. It was probably very tough. So what was the motivation or how did you push yourself through to keep going? Uh, in addition to those classes, uh, the first year I was still playing. Uh, I played one year for Long Beach City uh, and I was coaching two teams on the side. And so after that, I coached, I retired, then coached the team uh, for Long Beach City. And then I was coaching two other club teams next to that. So basically my life was class and volleyball for four years straight before I came to Nebraska. Uh, so the motivation was like, I sacrificed so much to get there. Uh, and I was putting like so much money on the line because there is no scholarships, um, especially when you're uh, international, you don't get any like uh, aid from the state or the government. So there was no way I could like stop in the middle of it. That was already like too much on the line. And I was, um, I really want to coach in college volleyball. That is really what I aspire to. And so I guess when I put my mind to something, I become kind of obsessed with it. So that was, I'm convinced that it's going to be all worth it at the end. So then what was the reaction like when you'd been working this hard and then you got the offer from Nebraska to come be a coach? You know, what was, what, what was that like? It was a big, um, like, okay, people are seeing my worth. I'm like, I deserve to be part of like one of the best program in the country. Um, so that was reassuring. Let's say at first, 
but then I knew that that wasn't the end of it either. Uh, Tyler Hildebrand that recruited me made it very clear of like what was expected of me and what my life would be when I arrived. So yeah, I only knew him and Kristen when I moved to Nebraska. So it was a little bit of a lonely experience at first. Uh, and I finished my master's degree in, not in two years, but I, I sped it up and went in a year and a half while in season and doing all the Huskers plus coaching at VCN. So I guess I didn't slow down the rhythm at all. It might have been even faster. Yeah. Yeah. And um, who was one of the first, or actually I'll ask that later on what you talked about, Tyler, he laid it out to, you know, what was expected, what would, what you had to do, what were some of those expectations and the things required of you? So like the, what I explained earlier about like what the job of the GAs mm -hmm. is at practice. Yeah. Uh, I happened to have the freedom to do a little bit more uh, as I went on and as Coach Cook trusted me a little bit more. Um, but it was like really clear on like, hey, this is what is going to be at practice every day. Uh, this is how intense it's going to be. Like, this is how tired you're going to be and stuff like that. So like I knew exactly what to expect mm -hmm. uh, and I had like a little kind of chip on my shoulder, but um, I was older and Coach Cook doesn't like, not like older guys, but like according to like the physical charge that we have, usually like 22, 23 year old guys are going through it a little bit easier than when you're 30. Mm -hmm. So that was a little bit more like a physical challenge. Let's put it that way. And um, to speak on Coach Cook, um, Coach Cook, he was quoted in an article written about you on Volleyball Mag saying he brings a unique perspective and comes from a different culture than we have in America. He's fun to be around and sees the game really well. Remy is a rising star and, and, and will be a great addition to any program that hires him. Um, what can you say about your time spent with Coach Cook? Uh, it was, first of all, it was really nice of him to say that. Uh, and when people told me about coach cook they were telling about that guy that never smiles and that is like really <laughs> scary uh and i can see that like can be like um intimidating i would say and then i got to know him and the way i function i try to be myself everywhere i go and the way i function and i have functioned with every head coach that i had before is that i love offering um new ideas the thing I see, the things I think about, uh, ways I think the teams could benefit from uh, my expertise or something that I heard, saw, experienced before. And I have no problem ex like saying it out loud and proposing it. And then if the coach wants it or not, it's not in my control anymore. So I really no ego doing that. So we had like mm -hmm. a lot of conversation. If you ask Coach Cook, usually it was on Mondays, I was coming in his office and we were talking for a little bit. And I was throwing a bunch of IDs and stuff that I thought could help. And then most like most of the time he was, uh, no, we're good. We're going to do it our way. And sometimes he was interested. So it was more like a, an exchange that was, I'm going to tell everything that I have on my mind, all the IDs, and then you can choose if you want them or not. Um, and so he gave me the freedom actually to like do that. He could have turned me down at first and he, it was really nice on like letting me the opportunity to like share what I've experienced. Uh, indeed, like France is like a very different country when it comes to training volleyball than the US. And I think that's part of one of my strengths. I know how to train multiple different ways and I've tried a lot of different things. So I can choose what like I thought I think is best. Uh, and it happens that France is a very good country at volleyball and especially in men's volleyball. Uh, they just won the gold uh, for men's volleyball in the last Olympics um and they won the last vnl so like they're very good and the way they play is very different from the rest of the world um so there is things that i bring to the table that like probably not many people have heard uh but that work at the highest level so that can be interesting for like d1 volleyball programs um so yeah he really gave me the freedom to do it and that was really interesting to share with him because he's one of the best coaches in the country so it's really great to be able to like talk with someone like that. And um, you said, obviously, one of the best coaches 
in college volleyball and I maybe even ever in college volleyball, you know, I could, I, I, I would go on record and say that, but were there any times where he would say something or come up with a plan and it was just like, nobody else ever thought of it, but it was, it was genius. I think the genius of coach cook is not in like, um, ideas that nobody thought about before. It's his level of expectation, his consistency, sorry. Uh, like he is dialed in and like all out all season. Uh, he is probably, as you said, one of the best, if not the best in college sport, probably because he outworks every other coach in the country. He is like on nonstop for the whole season. Like now it's his break. Uh, and even when I text him, he responds in less than like 10 minutes. So he's still on his phone, still like working mm -hmm. when it's like that you can take a break. Um, like he knows the gym, like he knows his gym very, very well. Like he can feel uh, what's gonna happen, what the mindset of the girl is. Like he has so much experience doing it that he's like really spot on every time he takes a decision. I think that would be more what is impressive mm -hmm. about him. It's like extremely organized. Uh, have a, like a long-term plan the whole time and be really uh yeah spot on and like right very mm -hmm. often of like knowing what we should change why and when i think that's or like when to be consistent with something um yeah he's a very very good trainer absolutely and that is that is interesting because not a lot of people get to you know get that backdoor access to what makes the Nebraska volleyball so good and what makes Co Coach Cook so good, at, so good at his job. So it's interesting to see the, a, little, a little bit of the behind, this, behind the scenes look as to what Coach Cook does and why he's so good. Um, could you tell me the first Nebraska volleyball game, obviously we have the sellout streak and we have some of the most diehard fans, at least in the, sti in the country. So tell me about your first experience of watching a Nebraska volleyball game from the Devaney. Uh. First one was a black and white scrimmage. So it was a little bit weird because it was not like a real game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was weird is seeing the Bob Devaney open and full. And like when I saw it open, I was like, you kidding me? Like there is no way this is going to get full for mm -hmm. a volleyball game. And then seeing everyone, like everyone is there like an hour early. As soon as the door opened, everyone is in that gym. Um, all the rituals that they have that they have built along the years and stuff like it's really really fun to watch um and i think the first time it became like really impressive um was i don't know which game it was i think it was penn state or something like this so it was like mm. last season when okay. we played like a, a big team like the first yeah. like real uh yeah. challenge and because like penn state is like a, a rival uh mm -hmm. i think it was the first time I felt like, God, I'm next to someone and I'm talking to them and I cannot hear what they are talking, like what they are saying. <laughs> when we're like yeah. a foot away because there is 8,000 people like losing it. <laughs> and that was impressive of like, of like, okay, like this is what it can become. Like when the bob is like roaring, it's quite impressive. When everyone is like really dialed in and it's like a tight game and there is tension, like this year, like Ohio State, mm -hmm. you couldn't hear each other. <laughs> like we couldn't talk like we had to be like ears and uh sorry mouth and the ears of others to like transmit a message it was like really really cool so yeah i think the bob is special absolutely it is um could you speak of maybe another special moment or if you could name just one you can name a couple of some of your favorite moments from nebraska in coaching there i i think that's my very very soft side inside of me I really love the senior nights. Mm. I want to get very emotional uh, because like we see a very, very good friend like going away and like mm -hmm. seeing the love of everyone, uh, like everyone stays. Like that's the only gym in the country that everyone stays for the senior night. Like every other gym in the country, everyone leaves. And like they are just presenting with the family and stuff like mm -hmm. this is the only gym where like there is still like thousands of people in the stand getting there to honor the players that played for the program and i think that's like extremely powerful 
And at the end of the day, that's why we do, I think that's why we play volleyball with those mm -hmm. relationships. Like, I think it was after Minnesota. Yeah, that was after Minnesota mm -hmm. that yep. we had a senior night. Mm -hmm. And like, we just lose the Big Ten like a day ago. Uh, we like, we lose Kenzie. It's like a very, very tough moment. And we are all in the locker room. And it's like, there's just love, love and happiness. And like, like we are so grateful to be around each other every single day. That like at the end of the day, like that's I think that's why I coach volleyball. For those connections, like all my best friends are people that I played with. All my best friends in the US are people that I coach with or that I played with. Like we create an unreal bond through that sport. And I think that's what really matters. So like, yeah, I think senior night was one of my favorite moments, just because we realize what we do it. Well, that was the perfect answer to that question. I could not have asked for a better <laughs> answer for that. Um, your connection with the girls and the players, you said, you know, those are some of your best friends and some people you, I mean, during season, you're with these people 24 seven. So could yeah. you talk about your relationship with some of those girls and, you know, which ones may have been some of your favorites? There's no, like, this thing is like, as a coach, there is no, like, people that I love better i think i love yeah. them all yeah. differently uh yeah. you connect on a different level uh with each of them and like depending on the time you spend with them mm -hmm. um and yeah you really spent like it was very funny so like we go back from oregon uh after we lose so everyone is like very very depressed and we see each other uh i think the day after so like basically 24 hours yeah. later and we all start giving big hugs to each other because it was like for the first time in six months that was the f we didn't see each other for 24 hours mm. so like 24 hours felt like ever like we gave a hug each other like if we didn't see each other for like six months and we were like wait we saw each other two days ago like we fine but like <laughs> it, it, that's really how it felt we were so uh used to like see each other every day like now when we crush each other, it's like, wow, we haven't seen each other forever. Um, I don't know, those girls are special. It was awesome to create like handshakes, stories, jokes with those players. Like they are in a great environment where they can be themselves. And so it's really cool to build something with them, like just a special connection with all of them as human beings, hopefully in like years, we can look back and still be friends and like if they need something i would love for them to reach out for example um it was sort of easier to connect with the freshmen because like they just came in they don't know mm -hmm. everyone uh the seniors have been there for a longer time so they had like very very strong friendship like maddie and kenzie uh were extremely close um but yeah it was a great experience they're all like amazing human beings so it was really like a chance to be next to them again you just keep answering these questions so well that i feel like we just <laughs> have to sit here and think for about 10 seconds before we go on i really appreciate it thank you <laughs> um so did you go um the year that very recently when nebraska went to na to the national championships were you able to go and have that experience with them yes so last year when we went to columbus mm -hmm. uh we were in um the program traveled everyone. Uh, so I was uh, at practice and we were doing the games. Uh, unfortunately, the NCA has rules about like how many people can be on the bench mm. at the same time uh, to make it equal for every program. So a lot of the GAs had to be on the in the stands right behind the bench instead of being on the bench. One of us was allowed to be there. OK. Um... But um, just feeling that and getting to go to the championships and going through the playoffs and all that, that had to have been a pretty special experience. That was really special. Uh, what was the most impressive was when we arrived for the final game. So we travel in the bus uh, mm -hmm. from the hotel to there. Like we have the police in front of us. That started to be like already fun. And mm -hmm. then uh, we arrived there and the door open and I'm looking through the window and I'm like feel like I'm hallucinating and there is like I don't know 300 feet of 
like red carpets to enter the gym. And along those 300 feet, there is like thousands of people of Husker fan that are waiting. And I'm like, no, there's no way. Like, <laughs> this looks like a concert, like rock star thing. And like all the girls pass through it and everyone gets nuts. And like everyone is cheering. <laughs> and it's just like, it's like you feel so, it's like so much for volleyball. It's insane. Like you receive so much love. So that thing was crazy. Like going in there and you're like, oh my God, like this, suck it in <laughs> because like suck it in because that's never going to happen ever again. Mm -hmm. Like this is really specific to Nebraska. Um, and so yeah, 19,000 people, I think is the most I've ever seen for a volleyball game. And there was a hell of a volleyball game too. So it was, yeah, it was a lot. It was awesome. It was devastating, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, to lose, but I don't know, that was a great, great season. I think we had, I, I liked that season because we were like kind of the underdogs. Like we were not mm -hmm. like the absolute favorites and yeah. we defied a lot of odds. Uh, so it was like really fun. But yeah, obviously, don't get me wrong. Like I was soaking it in because I was like, maybe I'm never going to live that ever again. So enjoy it. Absolutely. That was quite the season in. As all Nebraska fans know, we did beat Texas that year. So it's, yeah. <laughs> it was a great year. As long yeah. as we get to beat Texas, it was a good year. Um, what are your plans now? Since you're not going to be with the Nebraska program, what are your plans looking forward? So I just graduated um, as, sorry, as an international. Uh, I pay some people, which is like the working visa. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of where you're from, uh, once you want to work in the US, you need like a working visa. Uh, and so last year I got like many opportunities to go to work in other programs after our very good season. And I faced the same answer is like the school didn't want to do the visa process. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had to find a way to become hireable without needing the school to um, do this whole visa process because it's very long, somehow expensive. And so I graduated with my master's, which gave me a one year free visa. So now I can work mm -hmm. uh, legally and my green card is in process. So I spent more time and money this year to hire a lawyer and to try to work on my green card to try to be like fully set up and be able to stay in this country and have uh, my five years of hard work pay off to be able to stay. Uh, so yeah, so right now I'm looking for uh, job opportunities and there's a lot of pieces moving this year. Uh, a lot of coaches are getting hired uh, right and left. So hopefully I end up in a place where I can start my dream. And what is that dream? My goal is to be a head coach in NCA in D1 Volleyball. Uh, the cherry on the cake would be to coach in the Olympics. Mm. Uh, ideally for friends that would be even better uh, but I want a head coach uh, I've been coaching for a long time and I love it I love any position to be a coach but as I feel better as a head coach that's it's a little bit more my personality and yeah that's where I want to be so it's going to take some time uh, but at that point I'm patient I mean I was in school, in school for five years so I'm ready to grind uh, to reach that goal. Absolutely. Um, is there a specific program that you would want to coach for in the NSAs or in the NCAs, or is it any program? I don't really have like a, I'm not like an American, so I didn't like grew up with like my parents went to that yeah. school. So you have to support. So I don't have like that uh, mm -hmm. anchor of like college football or college basketball. Yeah. Like you're going to support one school. So like I learned school, like, which schools are cool or whatever mm -hmm. when I was like way older. So I didn't like, I don't really have like an attachment to any of them, even if of course I have now a little place in my heart for Long Beach and Nebraska, because that's where I studied and those are my uh, former schools. But I think that I could create a place where athletes can be safe and can become the best version of themselves like almost anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh obviously if it's not as cold as it was last week that's better <laughs> uh but 
yeah, I don't think I have like a real like a uh, favorite one. I think I could do like I could flourish anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as like the place I live in is a little bit like big enough mm-hmm. to like have stuff to do and like maybe like have a family and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have like really like a okay. I'm only picking between those four. Mm-hmm. Like I'm really open to what's gonna happen. Did you ever have a fear when you were moving to Nebraska and Lincoln that you would run into that issue of not having anything to do? Definitely. Yeah. Especially from what people told me about Nebraska before I moved there, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I had a little bit of that anxiety uh, moving here. And once you work for Nebraska, you don't have that much time for like the fun mm-hmm. stuff around anyway. Um, but I would say, I made it work like it was fine um like something for example like if the school was in omaha i think that mm-hmm. would be much easier like i think mm-hmm. omaha is like a perfect side town mm-hmm. i was living in long beach so like i know la and la is like gigantic yeah uh, so that would be too big something a little bit more like human size i would say mm-hmm. uh would be more my vibe like i'm very european at heart and very yeah. french so i need good food i need good wine I need all, <laughs> all those things, like very good restaurants and stuff like that. So uh, my fancy side, that's how Kelly Hunter call my uh, food taste. Uh, so yeah, my, my fancy self uh, enjoys when there is like multiple like options for restaurant bars and museums and stuff like that. So yeah, there... that would be like a good place to live. Yeah. Were there any places in Nebraska that you found that you thought were those fancy places and places you frequented a lot? Uh, so in Lincoln, there is the restaurant dish that is absolutely delicious. If you haven't been, I highly recommend it. It's very, very, very good uh, and very elaborate. Um, and in Omaha, uh, there is actually the best French restaurant I've ever been in the US. Uh, it's called La Buvette. Uh, it's in the old market. And every time I go to Omaha, I stop there because it's absolutely amazing. It's really like European style. It's old Swiss lady that owns it. Uh, So it looks exactly like Europe. Uh, The menu, like they handwrite the menu every single morning, depending on what they find. So the menu changes every day. And as they run out of stuff, they just like cross it. So it's only (laughs) fresh food. Uh, and so if you show up late, you might not have everything on the menu, but everything you have is for sure fresh. Um, I don't know. It's a real part of France. Like, it's the only place probably in the US you can smoke on the patio. Like, she allows people to smoke cigarettes on the patio just because she okay. owns the restaurant. Yeah. They do their own bread. They have the walls are covered in wine bottles. So when you want to order one, you just go pick up one and you pay for it at the end. So if you know what you're looking for, it's awesome. Yeah. If you don't know anything about wine, it's not as yeah. helpful. But it's, it's a special place. It's really a special place. I really enjoy it. Um, and the old market is beautiful too mm-hmm. in Omaha. So yeah, I, I really liked Omaha. So then um, what are your thoughts on some of the food traditions in Nebraska? You know, you have obviously corn. That is just the staple of Nebraska. And then runs as well. So what are your thoughts on those two? Uh, that's my one of my favorite jokes when people told me like what is american food it's like that has corn on it <laughs> that's american cuisine uh i'm not a big corn fan and i had runs out. i had to try i have to respect the traditions of the mm-hmm. states so i tried runs out and I, I don't rank it on the top of my fast food <laughs> chains i'm very sorry what what are your fast food chains ranked then uh Ranked a little bit. Chick fil A, Canes, mm-hmm. In and Out. I was in California. You cannot. Yeah. yeah. In and Out. I in think and Out. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I would go with those three. Okay. If I had to pick. Yeah. I can't complain. That's a very, that's a very solid three. That, that, that's a fair one. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's fair. Runza. I mean, Runza's, Runza's great, but it's, it's plain. Like we love it because it's in Nebraska, but it's not, it's not going to rank in anybody's top five, I don't think. Nothing wrong with being proud of something that is a home ground. Hey, absolutely. Um, well, I guess I'm trying to think if I got anything else for you. Oh, one of my questions. Um, the debate World Cup just happened. 
You're from okay. France. You've been in the, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I won't, I, I, won't, I won't bring it up. I won't bring it up. My one okay, question yeah. is <laughs> my one, obviously you probably watched the game, didn't you? Yes. Killing Mbappe. Very, very good. He's yeah, fantastic. I think if we had won that game, he would be president of France right now. I, yeah, I think I could agree. He probably would have been. <laughs> Um, but do you pronounce it football or soccer? Football. Football. Yeah, it's a blasphemy to call it soccer, but it's okay. <laughs> I, I, I learn how to <laughs> accept it as soccer. That's okay. Did you um when you were watching the World Cup? Obviously, you were in Nebraska and the, you were still with the team. Did you have to? Did you have to teach any of the girls anything about soccer, or was it talked about a lot? Uh, so the staff we watched a lot, the GAs and Jalen. Uh, there was always a game going on in the office because they were playing, I think, at 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. or something like this, uh, or 10 a.m., something like this, like during the full phase all morning and afternoon we had the game on. Uh, so we were watching constantly, and then when we had to go to practice, we had to stop. But if there was like a France playing or USA playing, we were trying to play it on like a phone somewhere in the bleachers or <laughs> on a small TV, try to follow the score. Uh, so yeah, I don't think we talked much with the girls about it. Uh, not sure they followed that much mm -hmm. the World Cup, uh, but with the staff, we were pretty invested. I'm not gonna lie, uh, which coach really didn't care about. He had no interest in the World Cup. I, only, when, that, only when France when France lost, now I received a text. Now he cared. He was making, yeah. <laughs> That's that's amazing. The, the only time he cared was when France lost. That's great. Yeah, which sounds fair. Oh yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's all I really have for. I got one final question for you though. The podcast we that we're on, it's called a Six A.M. Morning Practice. So, as a player and as a coach, do you like having morning practice, or would you prefer it in the afternoon? I do both. I had to wake up. I think at some point at Long Beach, we had to work out at six A.M. So like lifting weight at 6 a.m. I'm not gonna lie, that was brutal. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know that sometimes not every program has a choice depending on class schedules and everything. Like sometimes you have to do it mm -hmm. at those times. Uh, but if I had to choose, I would rather practice later in the mm -hmm. day. Like uh, now, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, but if I go work out in the morning, like my body is really tight. I cannot mm -hmm. lift as heavy in the morning that I can lift in the afternoon, for example. So uh love the early grinders but if i have to choose mm -hmm. i'm still french at heart and italian too i'm <laughs> half italian so like a little bit later in the day would be fine <laughs> that's that's great that's the answer i've gotten from just about all my guests is we do not want to wake up early we'd rather do it in the afternoon there you go <laughs> um any other comments or anything you want to say just thank you very much uh for having me that was a great surprise to see that message uh and that was a Pretty fun experience. Well, um, to be fair, I was looking for a podcast guest and I, I asked my sister, she's huge, huge Nebraska volleyball fan. And I asked her, I was like, hey, who should I have on from the volleyball team? Because I want to have somebody automatically. She's like, Remy. She, I guess, I guess she went to one of the volleyball camps that you guys held. Uh. And she was like, she was like, Remy was my group leader. He's the coolest guy ever. You have to have him on. So then she helped me, <laughs> she helped me um write the write the dm i sent to you she helped me do it all she helped me write some of these questions even so she was involved in the entire process that's super cool can you say thank you to her for me please absolutely really appreciate it that's very nice of her all right i think that's all i got thank you for coming on today remy thank you very much for having me